But Jay, you have been here, what, six months now? Yes, sir. Um, are you glad you took the job? Oh, absolutely, man. I uh, Just this place, these kids, man, this, this coaching staff, everything around it, man, it it's, gets better every day. You know, I mean, coming out here and whether it's a good or a bad day, man, you can coach these kids hard and they respond and they care. And, you know, Coach Newberry and the entire staff, you know, allowing us to be good husbands and fathers. And then the wives, man, that have taken in my wife, you know, like, like family, it's, it's awesome. Definitely glad to be here. It must have been a bit of a whirlwind for you. You took the job with Coach Connick at Mercer. I'm going to presume you had moved there. Then you all of a sudden have to pull up stakes and come up here to Annapolis. Can you talk about the craziness behind all that? And I mean, did, but it doesn't sound like you hesitated. You felt like this is a good option. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it's crazy too to add another piece is my wife is about a month away from having our second our second child. So, right, right, so. all of that and she's trying to find a doctor and it was it was crazy, you know, and, and talking to Coach Chronic and, and thinking, okay, this might happen, but, you know, not wanting to get too happy about things. But, you know, a, a job like this, I mean, it's known across the entire coaching world that these are, I mean, bucket list jobs. These mm -hmm. are things that guys want to have because the kind of kids that you get to coach and the quality of life that you have here and, um, you know, things you don't have to deal with in today's uh, NCAA football. So, you know, whenever he said, hey, man, are you ready to go? And I got the call from Coach Newberry, it, it was a no no brainer for me. So do you feel fortunate? I mean, you're still relatively young in the, your coaching career. Do you feel fortunate to be here at this point in your career? Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, this doesn't happen a lot. And, right. um, you know, a guy that was actually here that I look up to a ton doesn't even coach offensive line, but Kevin Downing, you know, he, yep. whenever I was at Virginia, he, he gave a speak about how he was one in a few of his job, you know, and how appreciative he, he is of his job. And, you know, I've always tried to take that everywhere I am. And, and especially here, you know, being able to be a FBS offensive line coach at my age and not only an FBS offensive line coach, but an offensive line coach at the Naval Academy, you know, that prides itself on tough physical football play and, and great offensive line play, you know, and, and just being able to be here around that is, I'm so appreciative every day. And, and once again, no matter good or bad day, I mean, it's my thought process is today's the best day of my life because I got to wake up this morning and do this. So I, I'm so extremely appreciative of having Coach Newberry and Coach Chronic believe in me, you know, because you got a 29 year old kid, right, that's coached and played and all that but you, you never know right yeah. and, and so them going out on a limb for me means the world to me and I'll be forever grateful to them. Coach Cronick had told me that he thought the biggest adjustment going to his new offense is for the offensive linemen because it's just vastly different from what they did in the triple option. How do you feel they've made the adjustment? You've had spring ball and then what you know time we've had here in, the, in August to try to get them acclimated. How are they coming along and adjusting? Yeah, I was really, really happy with the progress that we made from the spring and where we left off there. Then getting in the summer and the OTA practices and those guys, a lot of the times doing it on their own, you know, and how they, you know, there's communication between us as coaches and them and how things are going and how the guys are progressing, but them taking it on their shoulders and, and taking ownership in it and being coaches and that without me being there. And that's what's so important is we stress to them every day, you know, if I'm coaching one person, I'm coaching you all, right? And and listening to that. So then whenever it gets in those situations, you can coach those guys and I don't have to be there. And so, um, you know, getting into camp, obviously knocking some rust off whenever we got the pads on. But, you know, here really this past week, I, I've been really happy with the progress that we made. You know, some ups and downs that we've had to try and work through. It's not all been perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Um, there's been some bad days, but I think the guys come back the next day and they learn from it and they're trying not to make the same mistakes over and over and that's how you progress and I think they've done a really good job of that. So in the triple option the offensive linemen are taught almost exclusively come off the ball hard you know mm -hmm. forward motion that's not always the case in this offense can you talk about you know that's more you need more versatility as an offensive lineman I believe. Absolutely and it you know it starts in our stance of how we're balancing our stance uh, so we can do work on all different angles um, out of one stance and not have to get into this, you know, inside hand down, inside foot back, different things like that. And so it even just goes down to your stance. And, and in this, you know, we're still going to be a tough physical group. We're going to come off the ball, 
but there's some times where you have to be more patient, let things work out um, in a different zone things and just different things that we're doing and be able to sustain blocks, right? Because whenever you're in the shotgun, the ball doesn't, it doesn't hit as quick, right? So you're under center, it hits a little bit quicker. You can fire off the football knowing you don't have to sustain the block as long. Well, whenever things get into the gun, now it's a little bit different. You gotta be a little bit more balanced. And so it's, it's been an adjustment, but I, once again, I think the guys have worked and um, you know, through run and pass and, and really trying hard to, to take the drills, take the coaching and, and progress the way they should. So obviously Coach Chronic wants to throw the ball more. In years past, during the triple option era, pass blocking was an issue. There was times when there was a jailbreak whenever Navy tried to, you know, <laughs> to play action pass. Uh, is that a concern of yours or do you feel like they're pass blocking the way they need to? And I know that in sometimes with the short passing, the quick passing, mm -hmm. they don't have to sustain a block. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always a concern whenever you're having to work through things. Um, you know, the fortunate part for us is naturally what our defense does poses some problems and things and makes you be extremely disciplined, not only in your technique, but your eyes, um, hand placement, different things like that. So they're getting a lot thrown at them. So uh, once again, it, it's kind of like drinking water out of a fire hose. I think in the base things that we're good, there's things that we need to progress in, but I think I think the kids are getting better. Um, I, I know there's a noticeable difference from whenever we started camp to now. And um, you know, we're gonna continue to work on it. If, if there was a weakness, that'd probably be it. You know, But I think we do have to continue to work on that, but the kids have made progress. So I think the, the first group has been McMahon, Cummings, Self, Bhutan, who am I missing? Yeah, so uh, we've had a, a little bit of a rotation just trying to get guys and trying to build some more depth, you know, trying to uh, kind of rotate um, some guys in and out, like guy like Caden Hooper that's really come along and uh, at tackle and somebody that, you know, because they're all one play away from playing and something that I think is important is even in the middle of practice is I'm not going to tell them that they're going to go in and we're in the middle of a drive in practice. It's like, hey, Hooper, go mm -hmm. get him. Right. You know, a uh, guy like Hope Smith that, that can play guard and center, you know, thrown him in there. Um, you know, a guy like Cam Nichols no, I was just put him. Say, I saw him out yeah. there running with the first. Yeah, put Cam Nichols in there and just trying to switch guys around and, and breed that healthy competition. Um, because I think everyone knows here that we're just trying to put the best five out there. And mm -hmm. now we got to get the best combination of the best five um, where everyone gels and works together and, and give them time to be able to, to gel, right? But I think here in camp, um, really this last week's that last little bit of moving guys around, then we get really things set. But I feel good, you know, we've got some a little bit of depth and continuing to try and bring guys along. But um, been moving it around a little bit, you know, not necessarily a set group, but I, I feel good that we can go out and have a solid start in five week one. How is the position different from the triple option? I'm going to presume that they're not always four yards off the line of scrimmage directly behind the quarterback, that's not how they're going to line up every single time, right? Yeah, they'll move around some, but again, it's, it's we're, we're one back offense, and um, the be back is a big position for us, it's an important position for us. But right now we got, you know, we have two solid players right now, and again, we're just trying to find more depth, and the depth part is to just find guys to be more consistent. So, I mean, I feel good about where we are um, with our top two starters, but just, just as far as where they'll be lined up at, Sometimes we'll move them, but for the most part, they'll, they'll be behind the quarterback and, and, and we'll run our stuff. So I remember from way back when Paul Johnson came, he said that the fullback is the first option and it, you always wanted to establish the fullback and get him going because it opens up. Does that remain the case with the wing tee? Is it still a similar philosophy? Yes, you know, we got to have a running game. we got to have a running game, you know, and Coach Kronick has a, he has a, a great mix of plays he runs, you know, and uh, we're excited about what we're doing. But, but any offense, you got to be able to run the football. And our fullback's going to have to be able to run the football, um, be very, very physical, obviously take care of the football and be smart. But um, yes, the run game's going to be huge for us. We've got to be able to run the football, and we've got two guys right now that can do it, and uh, we can continue to, to work and try to get a, a third and fourth guy. Obviously, Alex and Daba are different types of players, so you can mm -hmm. use them in different ways. I talked mm -hmm. to Coach Kronick, and he said that Tessa was a guy that had versatility and may line up at a lot mm -hmm. of different places. Mm -hmm. um, and we asked Alex, and he said, I don't, I'm not a fullback, I'm a, I'm a offensive skill player. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, you know, what, what can you say about Alex and what he brings to the table? He's just a pretty good football player. Um, and most importantly, he's a great kid. He's funny, you know, he, he's, 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 a, he's a wise guy sometime and cracking jokes in, uh, in the meetings, but really good football player. Mm -hmm. uh, very intense kid, um, dynamic runner, can catch, you know, yes, he can line up anywhere on the field which is going to be a huge plus for us to be able to do some things with him. But again, he's an overall good player, but most importantly, he's a really great kid. 
And Daba, I mean, he had proved a couple years ago that he was very good between the tackles. Mm -hmm. Do you think he is a little bit different from Alex in the, a different running style? He is. I mean, he's, a, he's our power guy. He's, he's heavier this year. I think last year he was around 205. He's, he's up by 212, 215 right now. He's a powerful kid. You know, he's low to the ground, powerful legs, strong bench press kid. He's a 400 pound plus bench presser, so different different style. But he can get outside sometimes too. You know, mm -hmm. if he if he breaks through, you know, he can he can take it and score. So we're we're excited about where we are at fullback, man. And, and I'm just it's just my job to get those guys ready, keep them healthy, and uh, get them to the gate every Saturday. With, with Dabo, he proved that he's he can make big plays. He had long runs against Notre Dame. I'll never forget that mm -hmm. game when he broke had two big long runs that he mm -hmm. broke. I mean, do you try to? I mean, last year kind of he just wasn't his year. He didn't get the ball a lot. Mm -hmm. he, do you feel like as a senior, as a leader, he's a guy that you got to be involved in the offense? Yeah, he's going to have to play for us, without a doubt. Um, and again, like I say, it's, it's, it's my job. My main job is to keep both of those guys healthy. Both mm -hmm. of them healthy. You know, we have a great one-two punch. There might be some times during the game, but the same exact time. So mm -hmm. Yeah, Chestnut you know, did that last me, year with the me, split backfield. I mean, great players. Um, it's my job as their coach to make sure they're healthy all year long and uh, and keep them healthy. But just as far as Dabba being a big, um, a big play guy, he, he's shown that. And so it's good just to have that opportunity to, to put him in the game and, and know that, that he can make a big play for us. But if not, we can put Alex in there and uh, he can make a play for us. So it's a great partner to have when you have two guys um, that you can put in the game and play for us, and, but also they can be the game at the same exact time. So I'm, I'm, I'm just happy, man. I'm happy. I love where we are. Um, we're having a lot of fun. Kids are having fun and um, just a few more weeks before we play. So William Engel's a guy that kind of came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and he's jumped up to kind of number three on the depth chart at, mm -hmm. at time. First of all, was, did he play fullback in high school? Um, he did, but he didn't uh, play quarterback as well. So, okay, so, so last spring he did a little bit of both. But we moved him full time to, to fullback this fall. You know, but he's been up and down, uh, made consistent. And um, right now, uh, Stefan Egby has kind of made, made the push. Okay. Um, very, very strong runner. Um, very, very talented kid. But again, just, just very inconsistent. He probably had his best day on our last practice. Um, he had a decent day today. Um, runs real high, got to get him lower. Mm -hmm. But he's a very, very powerful kid, and he's very able. He's right. very able to do a lot of things for us. Just got to do a good job of getting him ready. And again, the main thing right now is, is finding a solid, you know, third guy. You know, and, and if if, if Stefan is that guy, when was that guy? You know, we're happy with it. Right. But again, right now, it's just up in the air. What led you to decide to follow Coach Chronic here? Um, you know. Kind of just tell me why you felt like this was the right move for you in your career. Well, uh, I always wanted to be on offense. Was an offensive player in college and what uh, position? wide receiver. Okay. So I um, had a couple of different opportunities to get back on offense. Once at Mercer, timing just wasn't right. And uh, you know, coach asked me about this opportunity. Told me he wanted me to come with him and get it started. And I mean, how could you pass up Navy? Mm -hmm. A historical program. You know, great place with rich you know history. I'm from Cincinnati. Roger Staubach. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, they're playing the biggest rivalry. You know, besides the Ohio State Michigan game. You can't pass that up, so you know, and it's a great place to raise my family as well, too. Well, so you've been here about six months or so. You feel you getting acclimated? You you feel you know comfortable here in Annapolis? I do, I do, I do. Uh, you know, I had that time here, like you said, six months before my family got here, so I was able to kind of get around, scout the area out, hit some good restaurants. Um, so you know, the, the family moved up in when we late July, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been you know adjusting well, so it's been good, it's been really good. So um, you, you, how, you obviously, even though you're on the defensive side of the, side of the ball, you know Coach Chronic's offense very well. Would that be fair to say? I would say, yeah, I, I know it fairly well. I know it fairly well. You know, we went against it. I've been going against him since uh, 18 when he came to Lenore Ryan. Uh, we've changed a little bit offensively, but, you know, the meat and bones are still there. Uh, so, you know, uh, that far, I don't know all the little ins and outs, still learning those, the little details. Um, but, you know, I got a pretty good feel for it. And what about coaching the snipes slash slot back, whatever you want to call them? <laughs> what, you know, is that, have you adjusted well to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely adjusted pretty well to that. You know, a lot of carryover from playing DB uh, as far as the stands and, you know, some of the movements, getting in and out of breaks, you know, same thing at the defensive back uh, position as well, too. You know, um, getting back to my home and running routes. You know, that's been an adjustment for me, kind of just, you know, learning those things of splits and, you know, so many steps and, and, and this and that. But uh, I've adjusted pretty well, having a ton of fun with it and uh, really grateful, man, enjoying it. So in the triple option, they almost always lined up just outside the tackle box, kind of turned it. I mean, they're not going to be lining up that way a lot in the wing tee. They're going to be all over the place. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll be in the slot uh, position, uh, you know, a lot. 
We, we definitely will, but we, we will split out, you know, we'll be at the one position split out, we'll be in the slot as well to remove, um, you know, we'll be in the backfield in the shotgun as well to split backs as well. So, you know, we'll keep people guessing where we're going to be lined up, but we'll, we'll definitely be in that slot and have that, you know, old, you know, slot back field that Navy you know, fans are used to seeing. Is it reassuring for you to come in here and you've had two returning players that have proven themselves in Eli Heidenreich and Brandon Chapman? No, it definitely is. Definitely is. I mean, those guys have been tremendous for me. You know, uh, they, they, they know how to work, you know, and they, 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 they know the room as well, too. So they help me get to know other players as well, too. And they, 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 they've been great, mm -hmm. you know. So it's always good when you're coming back to some guys that have some playing experience that have been out there and with live bullets as well, too. So uh, those guys are really good players. I'm looking forward to seeing them continue to grow, helping them to grow as well, too. So, you know, it's been a great experience with those two. So Eli impressed a lot of people with some of the plays he made last year. He, he is really talented. He's got great burst, great speed, quickness. He can make the miss. What, um, I talked to Coach Chronic and he said he could be like a slash weapon. We could put him anywhere. No doubt. What do, you, what do you feel like Eli brings to the table? Man, he brings a lot of toughness, first of all. Mm -hmm. The kid is extremely tough and he does not get freaking tired. He's a machine. Mm -hmm. You know, we call him Drago from uh, Rocky IV, the, the <laughs> Russian. Um, but, you know, on top of all that, he's a smart player as well, too. You know, um, that's what separates you from at this level is what can you do and how fast you can process and go play fast as well too. So he does a tremendous job of being able to process, see the defense, understand what they're trying to do and get into his route or running the ball as well too. So, you know, really excited to continue to help him grow and I'm looking forward to him doing some really special things for us. What do you think Chapman brings to the team? Same thing. Toughness. That little guy, I mean, he's yeah. put on 10 pounds of muscle, Bill, and really excited about that. That's something we challenge him about because that we call it body armor. Mm -hmm. You know, he's built his body armor up that's going to help him, you know, be more physical through the tackles, running the ball, not getting bumped around when running routes as well, too, and just help him last throughout the season. And he's a super smart kid and a very competitive young man, too. And he doesn't get tired either, mm -hmm. you know, at all. So, you know, both those guys bring, I mean, some invaluable, invaluable assets to us, you know. So really excited about both those kids, really excited. A guy that I've seen making plays out here consistently caught a touchdown pass just now. Yeah, uh, it could also be a kickoff returner for you, Tyler Bradley. T. Brad. What do you? It seems like Tyler has come a long way. He, he looks like he's ready to be contribute. Yes, no doubt. Looking for him to to help uh, a lot this year. You know, spell chat. Uh, I think he's really starting to come into his own. Challenged him in the spring to be able to run behind his pads, be a little bit more elusive, and have fun. I don't think he was really, you know, he was putting too much pressure on himself. And, you know, he took the coaching, it's still taking the coaching, and he's starting to see, you know, the fruits of that as well too. So extremely excited about him. He's another young man that is extremely tough. I mean, he's probably one of our best low blockers. Mm -hmm. You know, he's what, five, six, five, five at that, 170 pounds, and he will go strike you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really, really happy with his maturation. And I, I, I know he's going to, you know, help and, you know, play a lot of good football this year as well too. And I believe Amin Hassan is your position captain. Yeah, and he's another guy that can help on special teams as a returner, mm -hmm. um, but a veteran guy. Can you talk about the leadership he brings to the room and his, you know, he's a veteran guy. He's that steady Eddie guy, man. You know, I call him me. He's that old dog you have forever, man. When you got him as a puppy and he's just been rocking and rolling with you for, you know, for a long time. And, you know, he just brings a lot of experience to the room as well, to maturity to the room. Um, he does a, a great job of just, you know, being fixated to the details, all the little details. And, you know, that's invaluable mm -hmm. so you know and he's gonna play some good football for us as well too like I said he's playing a lot of football games big ball games so you know I'm not scared to put him in there um, and he's gonna have his chance to, to do some special things as well too anybody other than the four I mentioned that have stuck out to you that kind of you know you see could be in the rotation uh, Josh Guerin you know, we moved him from the X into the Z. Um, he's, you know, been down a little bit with a hamstring, but we just wanted to sit him a little bit. Long, athletic young man. I think he'll be able to help us at the Z snipe position. Um, a young kid, Mikey Pearson, who's a plea. I've noticed him. Yeah, number three, uh, from, young man from Delaware, uh, who's an A snipe. You know, I think he's going to be able to help. He's really impressed me as a young guy, being able to come in and absorb all the information um, that we're throwing at him. So those are two guys, you know, that I think can be able to come help. I think Gage Leonard is a tough young guy that be able to find his role on special teams or, you know, in the blocking game as well for us. So I think we do have some guys that have come off the bench, be some six men for us uh, and help out and contribute.